In this video, we are going to talk about the simplified Bernoulli's equation and how we can combine other equations with the Bernoulli's equation and using those equations, apply them onto different flow situations. So the Bernoulli's equation for a steady, inviscid, and incompressible flow is given by this equation. Uh, we've got six variables given to us in this equation. If we can find out five of these six variables, we would be able to find out the remaining one. Sometimes out of these five variables, we have to apply a different concept or a different equation in order to find out one of the variables. We're going to look at those concepts in this video. First of all, we're going to look at free jets. And to do that, we're going to look at this diagram of a tank in which vertical flow downwards is taking place. An example of this kind of flow can be your, uh, let's say, a tea kettle that has a nozzle or a tap attached at the bottom of it, or your coffee flask that has a tap uh, or a nozzle attached at the bottom, um, which is being indicated by the opening here. So you can apply this equation now onto this diagram between let's say point one here at the surface at the free surface and point two uh, and when we do that what we're going to see is that your value for z1 over here is going to be equal to h from here because you're looking at um, point one and point two your value for Z2 is going to be 0 because it lies at the axis. And other than that, we're assuming that the reservoir itself or the tank is large. And when it's large enough, then the velocity at 1, we're assuming, is going to be approximately equal to 0. So velocity at 1 is approximately equal to 0. And because it is open to the atmosphere, so the gauge pressure our P1 is going to be equal to 0 as well. Other than that, the fluid is leaving this nozzle as a free jet. And for a free jet, we make this assumption that the pressure um, of the exiting free jet is equal to 0 as well. Now, why do we do that? We can go back to F equals MA, apply that onto uh, finding out the exit pressure and we're going to see that the exit pressure is going to equal the surrounding pressure which is uh, a gauge pressure of zero because the exit pressure for an incompressible fluid jet is equal to the surrounding pressure and the surrounding pressure is gauge pressure which is going to be equal to zero so in this equation this term is going to be equal to zero we got this term which is going to be equal to zero. This entire term is going to be equal to zero as well. And other than that, because z2 is equal to zero, so this term is going to be equal to zero. And now you can simplify this equation and write in terms of the velocity. And this is the velocity of the free jet that is leaving the nozzle over here. You could also get this same equation if you had uh, taken points 3 over here and 4 right over here and you had analyzed this situation using the Bernoulli's equation. For that, uh, you would have uh, taken into account the fact that at point 4, your z4 would have been equal to 0, your z3 uh, would have been equal to L. Uh, velocity at 3 would have been equal to 0 as well because it is far away from the nozzle and uh, you could have found out the pressure at 3 which would have been through simple hydrostatics which means uh, that pressure equals gamma h and then pressure at 3 would have been equal to gamma which is the specific weight equals rho g multiplied by uh, the elevation and the elevation 
add 3 would have been equal to um, H minus L. Right? So you've got H here, and you subtract L out of it, so you're going to have the elevation of 3. Now, right now, we've looked at a vertical nozzle. If we were to look at a horizontal nozzle, which is uh, being indicated here, then what we would see is that the velocity of the fluid is going to be changing such that the velocity at the center line of this nozzle is going to be greater than the velocity that is at the top. So the velocity at 1 is going to be less than the velocity at 2, and the velocity at 2 is going to be less than the velocity at 3, and that is because of the elevation change that is taking place, right? Because h is changing, and from the previous equation that we saw, uh, velocity is equal to under root of 2g h. Usually though, um, the tank that we have, or the reservoir that we usually have, uh, the depth that is being indicated in here, h, is a lot larger than the diameter of the nozzle itself. So h is significantly larger than the diameter of the nozzle. And because of this, we usually what we do is that the center line velocity is the one that we uh, reasonably take as the average velocity. So the center line velocity is the one that we usually... Um, use as the average velocity of the fluid flowing through the nozzle. But a very important concept comes into play now, a very important concept of uh, fluid dynamics, that what if this exit that we are looking at, the exit of the nozzle, what if this wasn't as smooth as it is being indicated here? Uh, what would be the behavior of this jet then? Well then, if we've got a situation where the exit is not smooth, it's not well contoured as it be, as it is being shown here, and it's more, it more so looks like a flat plate, you could say, then what's going to happen is that the diameter of uh, the jet, which is being indicated by dj, the diameter of the jet is going to be less than the diameter of the hole itself, so d subscript j is going to be smaller than d subscript h and this is pheno this phenomena is known as the vena contracta effect this effect takes place because the fluid when it's moving into the nozzle it's uh, unable to take this sharp 90 degree turn on the corner that is being indicated by the dotted lines here. So because of that, the diameter of the jet is going to re be reduced and it's going to be smaller than the diameter of the nozzle or the diameter of the hole. And this is very important. It's known as the vena contracta effect. An important factor because of the vena contracta effect is that now the streamlines and this exit plane over here are not going to be straight anymore. And they're curved. The streamlines are curved now. And because the streamlines are curved, then what that means is that the pressure across this exit plane is not going to be constant. That means that you've got the highest pressure that is taking place along the center line. So you've got the highest pressure at the center line and you've got the lowest pressures at the edges of the jet so you've got p1 which is going to be equal to p3 and they're going to be equal to zero this means that the assumption that we had previously made uh, of uniform velocity with straight streamlines and constant pressure is not going to be valid at the exit plane However, that assumption is going to remain valid in the plane of the vena contracta, which you see by this subsection A to A dash.
within A to A dash, you're going to have the uniform velocity assumption, which is going to be valid. So your uniform velocity assumption is going to remain valid in section A to A and the vena contracta region, but for that, you have to make sure that your jet diameter is a lot smaller than the height of uh, this section over here within the reservoir. So you've got DJ, which is going to be a lot smaller than the elevation or the height H from the free surface. Now an important question that arises here is that what is this vena contracta effect going to look like for different types of geometries? And the answer to that is that the vena contracta effect is a function of the geometry of the outlet or of the nozzle. Uh, I'm going to show you some uh, typical configurations, typical geometry configurations. And over here you've got uh, C subscript C here, which is known at, as the con, uh, contraction coefficient, which is obtained experimentally. And you will see that it is a ratio of areas where AJ indicates the area of the jet at the vena contracta, and AH indicates the area of the hole. Also what you will see from this is that the closer the value of C subscript C, which is the contraction coefficient, the closer its value is to 1, the more well-rounded the geometry is going to be.